In 1963, a plane actually crossed the edge of space. And the most incredible part? It happened by accident. The mission was supposed to be routine. The pilot was experienced, the plan was calculated down to the last second, but a small ignition error was enough to push the X-15 beyond 62 miles in altitude, straight into the vacuum. Up there, with no fuel, no escape capsule, and flying at more than 4,300 miles per hour, pilot Joe Walker had to turn a rocket with wings into a glider, or be swallowed by the heat of re-entry. How did this happen, and how did he make it back alive? The answer is one of the most unbelievable stories of the space age, and it begins long before this flight. To understand how this happened, we first need to go back in time to the height of the Cold War. Back then, the United States and the Soviet Union were racing for every inch of the sky. Whoever flew higher, faster, and with better technology gained more than prestige, they gained power. It was in this setting that American engineers, backed by the US Air Force and the newly created NASA, designed the X-15. It wasn't exactly a plane. It looked more like a rocket with tiny wings and a tough skin built from special alloys that could withstand extreme heat. After all, on the way back from the edge of space, the fuselage nearly melted from the blazing temperatures. But here's the strange part. It didn't actually take off from the ground. The X-15 was strapped underneath a giant aircraft, a modified B-52 bomber, the same kind used to carry nuclear weapons during the war. This mothership carried the X-15 up to about 45,000 feet. Then, high in the sky, it released the rocket plane midair. Like letting go of a drawn arrow ready to fire. From that moment on, it was all up to the pilot. He ignited the rocket engine fueled by ammonia and liquid oxygen. The engine was so powerful, it burned through nearly 15,000 pounds of propellant in just 90 seconds. With that kind of thrust, the X-15 shot forward, reaching speeds over 4,500 miles per hour, fast enough to cross the entire United States in just 15 minutes. But this speed wasn't meant for passengers. The X-15 was actually a flying laboratory. Each flight carried instruments to measure radiation, test new materials, and study what happens when you fly right at the edge of Earth's atmosphere. NASA wanted answers. It wanted to know what came after the sky. But to find out, one crucial piece was missing. Someone willing to squeeze into that tiny cockpit and push the machine where no airplane had ever gone. That someone was Joe Walker. Joe Walker was more than a pilot. He was an explorer a NASA test pilot with nerves of steel. He'd already flown the X-15 dozens of times, reaching altitudes and speeds no other pilot had achieved at the time. Without a doubt, he was the right man to take the rocket plane to its very limits. On July 19th, 1963, Joe Walker prepared for yet another X-15 flight, the 90th of the program. Wearing his pressure suit, similar to an astronaut's, and checking every item on the list, he was ready. On paper, the mission looked simple. Climb to 66 miles in altitude, release an atmospheric balloon, two test sensors, one ultraviolet and one infrared, and come back. Everything was timed, everything under control. The engine had to burn for exactly 83 seconds. The climb angle had to be precise. Each mission carried nearly 450 pounds of experiments, ultra-high-speed cameras, radiation detectors, new material samples. In short, the X-15 was a masterclass in extreme engineering. Half plane, half rocket, 100% flying laboratory. But then came the mistake. The engine burned for just one second longer, and the climb angle tilted a half degree more than planned. That was it. But in the X-15, that was it, was enough to change everything. That tiny deviation pushed Walker past 62 miles in altitude, the so-called Kármán line, the internationally recognized boundary of space. 
In that moment, without realizing it, Joe Walker became the first American civilian in history to reach space. And the most surprising part? He didn't even know it. Just over a month later, on August 22nd, 1963, Walker climbed back into the X-15 cockpit. This time, the mission was bolder. The goal reached 68 miles in altitude to cross the Kármán line with a margin to spare. But there was a limit. Engineers calculated that if he ever passed the 76 miles, the heat of re-entry could be too intense. Intense enough to break the aircraft apart, so the idea was to get close, but not too far. Walker took off, and once again, he overshot. This time, he reached 67 miles. For a few seconds, floating in microgravity, he looked around. No sound, no noise, just the void. The absolute darkness of space, and the curve of Earth before his eyes. The blue planet below glowing beneath a pitch black sky. But that incredible moment didn't last. Those seconds of silence were numbered. Then, with almost surgical control, Walker guided the X-15 back down, landing smoothly on the dry lake bed at Rogers, California. Mission accomplished. Joe Walker had gone to space twice in a plane without an escape capsule. The X-15 program logged a total of 199 flights between 1959 and 1968. Beyond Walker, five other pilots also reached or crossed the Kármán line. All of them landed safely, except one. But before we dive in, have you hit subscribe yet? Go on, it just takes a second. Let's get back to November 15th, 1967. Lieutenant Michael J. Adams lost control of his X-15 during re-entry. The aircraft went into an uncontrollable spin and, under brutal aerodynamic forces, broke apart in midair. Adams couldn't eject in time and lost his life, becoming the program's only fatality in nearly 10 years of operation. Despite that tragic accident, the X-15 was far from a failure. In fact, it provided crucial data for the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo programs that followed. Its technology directly shaped the design of the space shuttle years later, the very concept of a winged spacecraft gliding back to Earth partly came from the lessons learned with the X-15. It was there they experimented with different atmospheric re-entry profiles and gained a better understanding of cosmic radiation's effects on pilots at extreme altitudes. The X-15 was, quite literally, a laboratory for learning how to go to space and come back. Joe Walker, the pilot who went beyond by accident, died three years after his historic flights in 1966, in a mid-air collision between the F-104 jet he was flying and the XB-70 Valkyrie prototype. A tragic end for a man who had twice touched the edge of space and returned unscathed. Yet despite his remarkable achievement, Walker was not officially recognized as an astronaut at the time. He was a civilian NASA test pilot, and back then, only Mercury astronauts who flew in orbit capsules were formally awarded that title. Test pilots, no matter how extreme their flights, were left out. Decades later, history began to be corrected, with the Kármán line at 62 miles, 100 kilometers, adopted as the international standard, Walker's accomplishments became undeniable. In 2015, he, along with other X-15 pilots, were posthumously recognized by NASA as civilian astronauts. It came late, but it was fair. By now, after hearing this story, you know about the plane that accidentally flew into space, but what if I told you about the place here on Earth just as mysterious, and what's hidden there could change the world? I'm talking about the Mariana Trench, the deepest point on the planet, where science is still uncovering secrets that could redefine our future. Click the video that's appearing on your screen right now, and let's dive into this incredible mystery together. I'll see you there.